have to seriously reconsider coming back to university because I can't afford it. Neither can my parents. Ottawa is proposing to withhold $2 billion in transfer payments to the provinces to establish a trust fund to finance student loans. Colleges and universities predict it will result in significantly higher tuition fees. Last year we were hit with a 10% hit in Ontario on our tuition. Now they're looking at a couple hundred percent. $8,000 is no good in my books, and I believe the 15,000 people here today would agree with me. The government's plan would make it easier for students to qualify for government loans. The timetables for repayment would be geared to income. Let's do it, Akam, and try to spread the way! Axworthy invited himself to the demonstration and invited student leaders to sit down with the government to consider funding alternatives. We're talking about more money for higher education, not less. That is a fact. Most students were in no mood to listen. They tried to shout him down while others pelted him with macaroni and eggs. Come around the table. Work with us to find solutions. Work to find alternatives. What we have to do is reason together, not go in confrontation. Student leaders say today's protest is only the beginning. A national strike is set for January 25th, unless the government decides to reverse its policy of higher tuition fees. Dave Rin, CTV News, Ottawa. Some top Canadian military officers are being accused of ordering a cover-up of abuse against citizens of Somalia. The accusation comes from Major Barry Armstrong, the man who headed the surgical team in Somalia. CFTO's Bill Rogers reports. Defense Minister David Collinet told reporters this morning that Major Armstrong's allegation will be dealt with at a military inquiry. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, the, the Major felt that he had to make that statement at this time. A military surgeon alleges a cover-up in Somalia, that senior military brass ordered that photographic evidence of abuse be destroyed. The Major refused to obey that order and has hidden evidence in a personal vault. The defense minister won't say if military brass are denying the major's allegation. He would wish to, uh, to assure Canadians that uh, uh, if, uh, if they, uh, there are concerns such as the ones raised that they be uh, fully aired and uh, we get to the bottom of it. Colinette says any questions that need to be answered will be answered at the military inquiry. Once the, the judicial process is over, once the court-martials are finished, there will be a resumption of the inquiry, and uh, Major Armstrong and anyone else who has uh, something to say will have their full opportunity to say that. The defense minister hopes the military trials will end in the new year. However, it's not known if the inquiry will be delayed by appeals. Bill Rogers, Ottawa. Despite the city's efforts to improve new home construction, the market in North Bay remained basically the same. Back in April, the city waived its $1,800 development fee for six months to try and spur development. But statistics show that as of September the 30th anyway, permits have gone up by just one. Cindy Mails reports. Contractors are building new homes in North Bay, but not many. It's a problem that has plagued builders for several years. That's why the North Bay Home Builders Association was encouraged when City Hall agreed to drop the $1,800 development fee. The development charge has been going up $200 a year regardless of what the environment is uh, as far as uh, housing. It's uh, something that was put into effect in the city a few years back and there really has been no change in direction even though uh, the, uh, the housing industry has slowed down considerably within our city. Wallace hoped the waiver would spur home construction, but the numbers show very little change. According to the CMHC, 52 single-family homes were built in North Bay this year, compared to 51 in 1993. There have been permits I know issued in October and November. Because the season, as you can see, has been so good, uh, there are still house, houses uh, being started, so I think we, we should have an increase of maybe 20% uh, over last year's number. I know of 14 or 15 permits that have already been registered for the city uh, next spring, which will protect them against the development charge. So if there would be no 14 or 15 permits in there had there not been uh, that situation. But Wallace is still concerned. The city's development fee is going up to $2,000 next year. He hopes contractors can convince the new city council to reduce the charges. Cindy Mills, MCTV News, North Bay. That's our first segment. Time now to go outside with Marilyn Mackey for a look at first weather.
Well, does it get any better than this? I tell you, lots of sunshine today. That was, of course, after the fog cleared this morning. Nice warm temperatures sitting around 8, 9 degrees for the afternoon. And we are getting up into double digits for daytime highs for tomorrow. Now, there are some people, of course, who love this weather, and I like it because it makes everybody in a good mood. But there are people who are waiting for the snow while the skiers and snowmobiles are constantly saying, when are we going to get snow? It's coming, but I don't know exactly when. Not in the immediate forecast, that's for sure. Now, if you're wondering why I'm standing out here at the corner of Oak and Wild, I'm here to show off our new MCTV BBS sign. They put it up today. Of course, we moved to a new location. We expanded our facilities. So now you have no excuse not to find us. You look at this sign, you slow down a little bit, go about another half a block down, and there we will be right on the right-hand side of Oak Street. We're putting new signage up there within the next couple of days to our new building. Anyway, weather-wise, it's going to be great for putting signs up because, like I said, it's going to be sunny and nice and warm. Let's take a look now at our current conditions in North Bay and what we can expect over the next little bit. We have clear skies right now, a temperature of 5. The barometric pressure is rising slowly, 102.9. Humidity is at 50% and the winds are southwest at 10. For tonight, a few clouds. It'll be getting down to around minus 1. There is no chance of any precipitation. The winds will be light and variable. There is a chance of some fog developing overnight, but that will clear up once the sun comes up tomorrow. A daytime high of 10. Very, very mild indeed. No chance of precipitation again. And the winds will be fairly brisk south 30 later on in the day. They will be light in the afternoon. As we head into the weekend, we will be looking for a little bit of cloud and some rain moving in, but the temperatures are staying nice up around seven or eight degrees for most of the weekend that's well above the norms for this time of the year i don't know guys snow is on its way i just don't know when anyway that's a look at weather for now i'll have all the details back at the desk in about 20 minutes now we'll go back to dennis thanks marilyn we'll take a short break and return with lots more news including north bay's post office getting ready for the flood of letters to santa <laughs> been burning the candle at both ends and can't get to sleep. Turn occasional sleeplessness into sleep with Nidol's single trusted ingredient. And wake up feeling well rested and alert. Nidol. Kira's kidnapped by Cardassians. What have you done to me? Who claim she's really one of them. Liliana. I am not your daughter. Caught in a deadly deception. You are never going to convince me that I am a Cardassian. Could her entire life be a lie? If you're not who I say you are, why would I be playing this game? Bajoran leader or Cardassian spy? <gasps> on an all-new episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Wednesday at 7 on MCTV. Hi, Barry Craig here from McPherson Shovels, Cadillac, Geo, your GM Goodwrench service bus dealer. This is Dale Earnhardt, GM Goodwrench NASCAR. It takes a top quality crew and equipment to make this car a winner on the track. At McPherson's, we feel the same care and quality should go in the servicing of your vehicle. Our well-trained technicians and state-of-the-art service bays will help ensure worry-free driving and prices you can afford. McPherson's, your GM Goodwrench service bus dealer, 276 Lakeshore Drive. It's time to think snow, so think Yamaha and get to Venture Power Marine during the Think Snow Sale. You'll find huge savings on new and used Yamaha sleds. Clothing for adults and children, gloves, boots, and helmets. But the Think Snow Sale is on for one week only, so hurry to Venture Power Marine. Welcome back. Yesterday, the provincial auditor reported that 10% of Ontario residents are drinking tap water from plants that don't meet government guidelines. The Sudbury Water Treatment Plant is one of those included in the report. But local Ministry of Environment officials in Sudbury say that doesn't mean people will get sick if they drink the water. Joe Schneider reports. The provincial auditor says Sudbury's water may not be as sparkling as it looks. And many people in the South End would agree. They've been complaining about dirty water like this for years. This is ridiculous. Uh, they can't bathe in it, they can't cook in it, they can't certainly drink it. And uh, there are people who are getting uh, very, very upset at the, uh, the length of time that uh, this problem is, uh, is taking to get rectified. In his report, Auditor Eric Peters said one million Ontario residents are drinking tap water from treatment plants that don't meet government guidelines. Treatment plants like the David Street Station in Sudbury. Two out of 14 samples taken from the plant in 1991 and 92 exceeded provincial objectives for turbidity. That means the water was too cloudy, but it doesn't mean there's a problem. The chlorination levels within the system were adequate, and uh, there were no le uh, measured levels of bacteria that exceeded our, our uh, acceptable levels. So we're satisfied that there was no problem in this particular instance. 
I guess the bottom line is, is the water in Sudbury safe to drink? The water is safe to drink. It's, it's, in fact, the report gave a clean bill of health to the, to the uh, treatment plant, and the water is of good quality. The auditor also criticized the province, saying plants aren't regularly tested, raising the possibility people could get sick from their tap water. But District Manager Roger Roy says water in Sudbury is continually monitored. The analysis that's being done on a, on a monthly basis at the, both plants in the Sudbury area are um, uh, sampled for 180 parameters. That includes organics, it includes pesticides, it includes metals, it includes radionuclides, it includes a whole gamut of things, all of which, uh, with the exception of turbidity on two occasions, were exceeded. So that tells me that the water supply is pretty darn good. And the dirty water problems in the south end aren't related to the auditor's report. That problem occurs when the region cleans pipes. It has nothing to do with the water treatment plant. The region does eventually intend to replace this facility, as well as the one on the Wanapate River, with a central facility on Wanapate Lake. But the Ministry of the Environment doesn't think the region is moving fast enough. They'd like to see the project done within 10 years. Joe Schneider, MCTV News, Sudbury. Well, North Bay is now home to one of the country's largest Canadian tire stores. That store was officially opened this morning. Oh, I've been there since well, 7.30, okay. 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 <laughs> Hundreds of people lined up outside the new store on McEwen Street for the 9 o'clock opening, and the store was reported to be extremely busy all day. The $10 million facility is three times larger than the old Castle Street store and will offer more merchandise and more staff. 60 people we had when I came to North Bay and our last payroll we were up to 150. The building's uh, approximately 90,000 square feet and the retail's 53,000. We have a 6,000 square foot outside garden center. Uh, basically the biggest store in Canada. Well, it looks like Santa Claus is going to have his work cut out for him again this year. Some students from St. Joseph's School showed up at the post office to mail their Christmas letters today. MCTV's Marlene Murray was on hand to ask the kids what they wanted for Christmas, and there were some unusual requests. The afternoon started out with a phone call from the big guy. Children gathered around to speak to jolly old St. Nick. The children were given special instruction on how to address their letters, and there will be a lot of them. Santa usually gets 1,200 letters from the children in North Bay every year. Santa Claus writes them. I just make sure that they have the right address and they get to Santa Claus and make sure that they get back to the post office to be delivered. It's usually after supper. He reads them all and then answers them all, and Mrs. Santa Claus does give him a help, and the elves just keep making the toys. And Santa will have his work cut out for him. The children have very long lists. So what do you want for Christmas? My two front teeth. How did you lose your two front teeth? I lost one on Halloween and I pulled one out at school. And are you sure Santa will bring them back? Yeah. Cool tools and uh, the cool tools work best. Oh yeah? So do you think, we don't even have snow yet, do you think it's too early to write to Santa? Yeah. You think it's too early? A little. No, I think it's a good time. Why, why do you think it's a good time? Um, because it, it takes a long time to get there. And if you haven't mailed your letter to Santa yet, there's still lots of time. Address your letter to Santa Claus, the North Pole, ho, ho, ho. And don't forget your return address. Marlene Murray, MCTV News, North Bay. Here's a fellow who's compiling his list to Santa. What have you got on your list, Craig? Well, you know, you know, it's more Viking stuff. <laughs> you have, have every year. enough Viking stuff. You, no, you, can, Viking you stuff can always there. use more Viking stuff and also some NHL hockey. Yeah, a lot of people would have that on their Santa yeah, list. Yeah, I know, it's not going to happen. And I don't know if it's going to happen. Maybe Santa anything. should be the mediator. You know, maybe they'd listen to him. There you, you know. go. Well, we'll discuss that and weigh that option <laughs> later on for the old sportscast. <laughs> The NHL GMs today met the media to give their side of the story one more time. Mm -hmm. We always hear this as things go on. Tom the Bomb Gillespie, Canada's latest great white hope, hopeless in his boxing, <laughs> big boxing fight last night down in the States. We'll have visuals of that, and enough to make you cringe, and a whole lot more coming up in the old sportscast, and some more late additions to Darren Turcott's 4-on-4 four four game for tomorrow. Great. Thanks, Craig. We'll take a short break and return with our World News segment. <laughs> What do you want? What do you need? Import? Domestic? What about features? Performance? Handling? Appearance? Do you want a cup holder? Before you do this, answer one question and answer it honestly. Deep 
down inside. Are you a passenger or a driver? Pontiac Grand Am. Built for drivers. Calypso's Christmas Countdown is on. Get your Christmas shopping done now, because we've got Clarion AM FM cassette CD controllers with 80 watts and a 6-disc CD changer for just $749.88. A Sanyo 6-disc portable AM FM radio with cassette, two seventy seven eighty eight. dollars And if you spend at least $100, bucks, you will get a CD or cassette case free. Guaranteed best price. Yeah. Guaranteed best service. Qualified staff. Guaranteed. So let our team take care of you. Calypso, bye-bye. If you want a better future, then the time is now to act. Ontario Business College can give you the confidence and skills needed in today's job market. Talk to an OBC counselor about your career as a human service worker, a pharmacy technician, an environmental assistant, or in accounting. Take the step, you can do it. We'll show you the way. Call OBC today. Call 495-1200. Welcome back. Several stories to discuss in our World News segment. A defense report says Israel has more nuclear weapons than first thought. The government of Ireland has fallen, while Italy's government has survived a no-confidence vote. But in this country, questions about the immigration policy, and specifically one of the men who makes the decisions. Tom Clark with more on these stories. Thank you and good evening. The murk and the mires surrounding the Immigration and Refugee Board is growing deeper, and today the Reform Party said it's time to shed some light. It is calling for a full judicial review of the board, its practices, and its minister, Sergio Marchi. Joining me from Ottawa now is Baytown's Mike Duffy. Duff, I think it's probably unlikely that the government will agree to this sort of review, but at the same time, it seems to me that this problem is becoming a real problem for the government and is only getting deeper. There's no question. The Reform Party says every time they lift a corner of this story, Tom, there's a rotten stench, and the deeper they dig, the more they find. One thing after another. People who came here as illegal immigrants getting appointed to the Immigration Review Board, an RCMP investigation now underway, the possibility of hundreds of thousands of dollars being paid in kicks, kickbacks to people to get people into Canada. What we're seeing here is something that reform says is just the tip of the iceberg. The government's got its fingers crossed. Senior advisors to the Prime Minister telling me here tonight, uh, we think Sergio's in the fast lane and he's about to get bumped. Well, there's a real uh, dollar figure attached to all of this, too, that I think is of growing concern to people, isn't it? Well, look at how many we put through. 25,000 refugees last year at a cost. The department's own number is thirty to $50,000. That's nearly a billion dollars in processing refugee claims. That's as much, Tom, as the entire United Nations spends on refugees, and they help five million refugees around the world every year. So it's a big dollar item. It's apparently a a mess of political patronage in terms of who gets the jobs and what they're doing in terms of the rates. Under the Tories, 45% of refugees were allowed into Canada. It's over 88% in the Ottawa area now because of the Liberals opening the doors. It's a billion dollar boondoggle and it ain't going away. In a couple of words, can Sergio Marchi get out of this with his political skin or not? I think that he's got to really shake it up. It's going to be touch and go for him. Okay. First, or perhaps the second big issue for the government coming up. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff, very much. See you tomorrow night. You bet. Hey, Tom's Mike Duffy joining me from Ottawa. Well, briefly in other news around the world now, the widely respected publication known as Jane's Intelligence Review reports tonight that Israel may have as many as 200 nuclear weapons and is close to having its own version of the cruise missile. The prediction is based on studies of satellite images of Israeli military bases. Well, the faint hope that existed last night for the survival of the Irish government has been extinguished. The coalition led by Albert Reynolds has fallen apart and collapse is now both imminent and certain. Prime Minister Reynolds was hoping that the Labour members of the coalition would stick with him, but in the Dale this afternoon, the plug was pulled. Dick Spring, the Labour Deputy Prime Minister, resigned. And he set the stage for an election which will come within the next few months. Well, the political winds were somewhat kinder to Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi, who today won a critical vote of confidence. The Italian Parliament approved cuts to the national pension scheme, which in itself will have a significant effect on Italy's huge deficit. But it also paves the way for more reforms, reforms by Berlusconi and signals perhaps a new political stability in the country. Well, the ups and the downs of politics in Europe seem somewhat tame to what's happening in Zimbabwe. 
The Victoria Falls are stunning in themselves, but they take on a whole new hue when you jump off of them. Mark Austin of Britain's ITN has that. They are, of course, one of the seven wonders of the world. But when a certain Dr. Livingston chanced upon them 150 years ago, one can only presume he didn't Five, indulge in this. Four, three, two, one, bunny! The Victoria Falls, long a favourite with tourists, now a mecca for bungee jumpers from across the globe. They launch themselves from the bridge spanning the magnificent gorge at 111 metres. It's the highest natural bungee jump in the world. It just goes by so fast. And just, you don't really know what's happening. Simple as that, you don't know what's happening. Um, it's pretty awesome, yeah. Cool. Britain, Tim Barker, is nervously contemplating his first ever jump. The first time he's trusted his life to an ankle harness and an elasticated rope. You glad you did it? Yeah, I am. But if sheer fear isn't enough to deter you, the price, 60 pounds a jump, probably will. These thrills don't come cheap. Mark Austin, News at 10, Victoria Fall. And that's my report for this evening. I'm Tom Clark, back now to Dennis. Thanks, Tom. Late word from Saskatchewan. Farmer Robert Latimer has been found guilty of killing his severely disabled 12-year-old daughter. It took a jury less than four hours this afternoon to convict Latimer of second-degree murder. The jury was told during the first-degree murder trial that Tracy Latimer died of carbon monoxide poisoning from exhaust that was pumped into a truck. The sentence for the charge is life in prison with no parole for at least 10 years. Finally, the main foyer of Chippewa High School was a busy place today. A career fair is being held there all week over the lunch hour to help students plan their future. Marilyn Mackey reports. Is this just a cannon ornament? Jane Moffat is in grade 11 and right now says she wants to be a lawyer, but she still has other interests. Today I feel it's a very good one because it was into the art students and there's a lot of students at our school that are interested in arts and dramatic arts and music and so. So Jane is spending her lunch hour touring the career fair. I learned from Joanne Brusso from Create Unique about what courses to take in order to learn how to sew. And I learned from men from Canada about the cooking services. There's two teachers here. And um, Barbara Trelevin was here from the dance studio talking about dance teachers and how to get involved in dancing. And the North Bay Police Force was here to help about how students can get involved in North Bay Police. Nancy Dewar-Stenning is a guidance counselor at Chippewa. She's helped plan the career day and hopes it will heighten the students' awareness of the opportunities in their community. This is open for the whole school and different teachers have uh, projects for the kids to complete where they have to interview presenters and that kind of thing in all different courses, the Frost Tech courses and um, uh, Business English, those kinds of classes. During the four days, over 40 presenters will visit the school to help students plan their future. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good starting point. We certainly wouldn't uh, begin and end with this kind of a thing for uh, career planning with our students. There's quite a bit that's done behind the scenes, you know, where we, we start interviewing our students and doing career planning through guidance in grade 9, and it carries through all the years at high school. Marilyn Mackey, MCTV News, North Bay. And Marilyn joins us. Did anyone get interested in the television career? Just a warning, Dennis, there are a few people applying for your job tomorrow from there, so... <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Be prepared. That's fine. Yeah, they were great. They were Part of the lot, business, you They were know. asking lots of questions about broadcasting, and I had one of the cameramen down there as well, so they were interested to see how the camera worked and stuff. So, yeah, great kids. Anyway, weather-wise, yes. Weather-wise, lovely, lovely day today, and more lovely, lovely weather in store. All the details when we return. <laughs> Lifestyle choices for life or death. A CTV poll on Canadians and their health. What's good for you and why people don't do it. That's later tonight on CTV News. When it comes to brake replacement, some brake shops seem to have low prices. So how come they can charge you more than they advertise? 
Good question. That's why at GM Good Rent Service Plus, the price in the ground is the price in the hoist, including our newest service that gives you all the brakes. You get complete front brake service starting at this low price. This includes replacement of front pads with quality, genuine GM brake lining, plus a complete brake inspection. Expert service, honest prices. That's GM Good Rent Service Plus. Operation Public Alert, or PAL for short, helps people in distress and makes our community a safer place. Look for the Operation PAL symbol on Centra Gas vehicles. Our service people can report crimes in progress or summon help quickly if you're stranded, injured, or the victim of an accident or crime. When you see the PAL symbol, you'll know Centra Gas is working to make our community a safer place. Grandpa? What? Where did your hair go? I lost it. Why didn't you look for it? I didn't really lose it. It just fell out. Why didn't you pick it up? You know, Harry, before you moved in, I didn't have to answer these annoying questions. I'm sorry, Grandpa. That's all right. Ed Asner revs up the night with great laughs on Thunder Alley tonight at 8 on MCTV. How come you have hair in your ears? Well, if you were out and about today, lots of smiling faces, and how can you help but smile when the sun is shining and it's about 8 degrees and it's the middle of November? And you can keep smiling for the next couple of days because this warm weather is staying with us until at least probably Thursday or Friday. Taking a look at the jet stream, is coming way up from the south, right up into Hudson and James Bay, and look at that nice warm air coming up behind it. So we are seeing temperatures about 4 or 5 degrees above seasonable norms for this time of the year. There is a little bit of moisture running out onto the east coast. Uh, that's sticking down in the States. It was pretty nice out in eastern Canada today with sunny skies and nice temperatures out there. Looking to the satellite map now, you can see there is a little bit of a system out there. It has just moved up because they had sunny, clear skies in most of the eastern provinces today. Clear through southern Quebec and right through into uh, Eastern Ontario, Western Ontario under a little bit of cloud activity and they're actually going to see maybe a little bit of snow there tomorrow and the next day but that system is stalling and we're not going to see anything but sunshine. Now here are the systems as you can see there's a great big low pressure system looping off into the Atlantic. Here's the high ridge of high pressure tracing down to another high in the states. That's the system that's going to affect us for Thursday and Friday for sure. Out in the western part of the country today, a low-pressure system sitting into Alberta. There's a cold front down into the States and off in behind into Vancouver. They don't mind the snow out there. Lots of skiers out in Whistler, that's for sure. And it's clear up into northern BC. Lots of sunny conditions out there. For tomorrow, the high-pressure system will have moved off into Atlantic Canada, but there still is a big, strong ridge in behind it. And that's going to be our dominant feature, like I said, for the next couple of days. This system has stalled. It'll be sitting there for probably uh, two or three days. It'll start moving in Saturday for our region. We will see a little bit of cloud cover and some rain with it. No flurries in the forecast right now because the temperatures, as I said, are staying warm. We're looking at highs of about 5 to 7 throughout the weekend. And then when we come back Monday, there's a high-pressure system sitting out on the west coast. It'll be pushing its way through, and we have sunny skies in the forecast again for Monday. What can I say? It looks great. I'll have all the details right after this, but first a look at these temperatures. More and more people are discovering Canada's best choice of minivans. We've had uh, two Aerostars and now two Aerosports. I think it's very sporty for a van and it allows you a good handling. At the Minivan Center, your Ford and Mercury dealer. Actually, we traded in another car, an Alfa Romeo, for the Aerosport. Now get value-packed Aerosport, year-end clear-out price, just $2.99 a month at your Ford and Mercury dealers. The Minivan Center. Wasi Building Center and Goulard Lumber are warming up winter with hot Christmas savings from Makita. Save on quality Makita products like this quarter sheet sander with dust bag, just $79.98. And this circular saw with electric blade, $169.98. Check out Makita's Christmas flyer for the best gifts like this cordless drill price for giving. And this drywall screwdriver is yours at $159.99. Makita, the power you can trust. Find them at Wasi Building Center in Calendar and Goulard Lumber, Sturgeon Falls. It's Christmas at Quilts and Other Comforts. The joy of giving is only half the fun. One visit, so many ideas. Quilts and Other Comforts, 151 Main West, downtown. Ho, 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 ho. Something for everyone here. 
Ho, ho, ho! This is the place to go for Christmas, you know. Gulliver's Quality Books and Toys, 147 Main Street West, downtown. Well, there was lots of fog in the city this morning, and we are expecting maybe some more fog tomorrow, but then the sun is going to come through, and we are expecting another lovely day. Let's take a look at our current conditions in North Bay. We have clear skies, a temperature of 5 degrees. The barometric pressure is rising slowly, 102.9, humidity of 50%, and the winds light southwest. For tonight, we'll see a few clouds roll in, a low of minus 1. Nothing to worry about with those clouds, though, because there's no chance of any precipitation, and the winds will be light and variable. Then for Thursday, there's that sunshine I promised you, and very, very mild with a daytime high of 10. The winds again southerly, 30 kilometers an hour. That'll be later on in the afternoon. There'll be light in the morning and no chance of rain. To the long-range forecast now on Friday, cloudy. There is a, about a 50% chance of rain. It'll be mild again, a high of 9. There will be strong southerly winds, 40 kilometers an hour, a low overnight of 3. Then on Saturday, cloudy, windy, cooler, about a 40% chance of precipitation, 5 and 0. And then on Sunday, look at that. Sunshine comes through again, but things start cooling off to about the norms for this time of year. A high of 3 and the low should be minus 4, not 4. It's not going to get warmer overnight. That's my mistake. I forgot to put the minus sign in. I'm allowed one mistake a week, and that was it. Great, and right. it's only really Wednesday, so that really puts the pressure on you. That's right. right. Yeah, i got two more days to get through without <laughs> doing anything wrong. <laughs> oh, well, you do so much here that's right. Thank you very much, Dennis. You're great for my ego. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marilyn. Now for our continuing series on hunting in the north. To a non-hunter, the idea of heading to a remote location each fall to shoot a bear, moose, or duck would be foreign. In part three of Going for the Kill, MCTV's Brian Oliver joins a group of duck and moose hunters to discover why they love the chase so much. Sixty-four days a year, I wait for this. Yep. As soon as I leave, I'll be waiting for next year. <laughs> <laughs> Hunting. Ask anyone who does it, and you'll get a similar answer. It's hard to explain, but for some, it's quite simple. Gets me away for a week. No women, no phones, no kids, no nothing. It's a rest. <laughs> John McCabe drives nearly a thousand kilometers each fall just to go moose hunting. An average for me would be, say, five hundred dollars. Now that's a, that's a pretty cheap week's holidays. Really, that's like that's pretty reasonable. Where are you, you going to go for five hundred dollars and, and have the fun I have? Okay, Dan, let's grab the beer. For many, a hunting trip is a well-earned escape from day-to-day -day life. Another blinds down the far end. Regan Corelli and Dan Canapini are gearing up for an early morning okay. duck hunt. But the wood ducks land right in the middle. And they're arranged between Justin's on the point. Oh yeah. And myself is over here. They have to set everything up the day before: the decoys morning. and the camouflage. It's a routine they've both gone through dozens of times. My sacred day is September the 14th, and because, because duck season starts on the 15th, and for 25 years now, I don't think I've missed uh, September the 15th. i got to be out there on opening day. There. The sounds of the north. <laughs> grab it, grab it, Not bad, boys. Lay up the bar. It's open. It's almost in a sense, for me, to retaining my youth and getting back to those good old days when hunting was great. And knowing full well now that the hunting pressure is on and the game is less, I try to uh, more or less focus on the camaraderie of my friends coming down and having a good time. And yeah, the hunting is there, but it's not the end all and the be all. It's part of the whole scenario. Time now for the ANP Good News File. A big fundraiser for the United Way is planned for this week in Sudbury Banking Institutions. More on that and other good news from Tamara Eschenko. In Sudbury, a media conference was held at Llewellyn Park Secondary School to promote National Casual Day, organized for Friday, November 18th. Locally, the day will have a Western theme. Participants will pay a fee to the United Way to dress casually or wear Western attire. And things got off to a great start with a $1,500 donation from the students at Llewellyn. In conjunction with this Friday's event, Wild Horses, formerly the Buckeye Boys, will perform at the Holiday Inn with proceeds to the United Way Sontrade.
Drivers in North Bay got a break at the pumps this week. The Canadian Tire Store downtown slashed the price of regular unleaded gas to 49.9 cents as part of a going out of business sale. The gas bar is moving to a new store location. Gas prices in North Bay are normally around the 54 cent mark. More good news in Timmins over the next few weeks taking place at Viewpoint Motors. That's where residents are invited to drop off a Christmas toy in an effort to fill the box of this pickup. Once full, the gifts will be airlifted to the small native settlement of Attawapiskat on the western coast of James Bay. An all-girl effort of 30 students took part in St. Basil's Secondary School Wake-a-thon in Sault Ste. Marie. The event was held to raise funds to help build an orphanage in St. Lucia. A local builder is sending down materials at cost. Students managed to stay awake with a number of activities, including line dancing, aerobics, and a scavenger hunt. And in the process, raised $1,000. And Greg joins us now for a look ahead. Yep, more bad news from the, well, actually, there's no news from the NHL situation, but Started I guess news. no news is still <laughs> bad news. Some bad news for Tom the Bomb Glesby, a boxer rivaling the one and only Willie DeWitt. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the old sportscast. And a feature on Daniel Cleary of the Belleville Bulls, the youngest player in the league, is already one of the best players in all of the OHL. But let's take a look first at tonight's ticker. Let's say you're paying about the same amount, but since you could earn Club Z points towards valuable free rewards and get more money back when you use your more card at Zellers, you could actually get much more at Zellers if, in fact, you were paying the same low price, which you're not. More savings, more rewards, more money back. Zellers were the lowest prices the law every day. Coffee Company presents African Safari Blend. Beans from the heart of Kenya give this coffee an intense full body and fine wine flavor. The taste of African Safari is waiting. From a company that makes coffee an adventure. The Nabob Coffee Company. Stewart's is North Bay's quality furniture store with prices anyone can afford. Browse anytime and discover incomparable prices on the finest home furnishings in town. Shop now during the fall stock clearance for even lower prices on these outstanding products. The latest styles and fabrics are arriving daily at Stewart's and as soon as they're on display, they're on sale. Every item in store is currently 30 to 50% off the retail price. So now is definitely the time to buy. The fall stock clearance only at Stewart's, 536 Main East. Quartet, a phenomenal vocal experience. Yours to enjoy Saturday, December the 10th at the North Bay Arts Center. Safe scene, changing me. I'm not the girl I used to be. Spending all my time alone. Always in my never home. You think by now I'd find a way to stop this hurting day by day. Lonely through. Quartet, Saturday, December the 10th at the North Bay Arts Center. Media presenter, MCTV. Welcome back and good evening, everyone. While well, National Hockey League general managers remain determined to get their way when it comes to the NHL lockout, the GMs met the media in Toronto this morning after a day of closed-door meetings yesterday. The GMs reiterated their desire to sacrifice the season if they don't get a fair deal with the union. Sunil Joshi with more. The latest chapter in the NHL labor dispute was written this morning when the league's general managers invited reporters to have breakfast and then turned up the heat on players boss Bob Goodnow. There is no deal to be made. There's no negotiating, excuse me, no negotiating going on. Doesn't matter who you bring, bring the whole crew in. We all sit there and drink coffee. 
With their leader, Gary Bettman, watching the proceedings, one by one, the GMs claim the players are being led down the wrong path on every issue, including opening the books. I had, I had our players rep to my house. I showed them the information on our team, and he said, wow, is that real? I said, you think I want to go to jail? Every single team has prepared the same report as I have with me. It's there for any of the big six auditing firms to verify or not. And yet, and yet, he does not want to examine them. Oilers boss Glenn Sather figures nothing will get done until a deadline is set. The commissioner is reluctant to impose a deadline, though he admits it is crunch time. Sunil so Joshi, CFTO Sports. They make it sound so simple, don't they? Well, let's move on in the hockey world. Four more on and off ice greats were inducted into the National Hockey League Hall of Fame last night. Two were players, one a former league executive, and the other a very noisy announcer. Lionel Big Train Conacher and Harry Watson were the players inducted. Brian O'Neill is in as a builder. And Sabres announcer Ted Darling made it as a broadcaster, which shows that maybe me and Chip, if we hang around long enough, we'll make it to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, a thrilling moment and the one I'll never forget. It's the ultimate. It's the uh, climax of a uh, of a career, and it's a nice way to uh, to sort of end one's career in hockey. Well, there are a lot of things that have been going through my mind for for a long time ever since Scotty uh, phoned me and told me that uh, my name was uh, announced uh, being in the in the Hall of Fame and and uh, not being a, a one that likes to be out in the front of people and in the crowd. Why? I had a lot of butterflies. Dennis and I are eligible in the year 2050. Two games in the OHL tonight. Peterborough is at Belleville. Niagara Falls is at the Owen Sound Players. Well, getting back to the Bulls, they're having a pretty good year, and a big reason why is their youngest player. The Belleville Bulls' Daniel Cleary has quickly become a force in the Ontario Hockey League. The Bulls' rookie sensation is fifth in league scoring and has made quite an impression on National Hockey League scouts. But the NHL will have to wait a while for Cleary because he's only 15 years old. Daniel Cleary won't turn 16 until December 18th. Yet in 17 games with Belleville this season, he has scored 14 goals and 16 assists. The OHL's youngest player is among the league's top 10 scorers. Five of those points came in Cleary's very first game. Uh, obviously, um, really, really boosted me up big time. You know, I went in, came and got really intimidated. You know, uh, coming in as 15 years old. But the first game, you know, my line mates, uh, even my whole team just boosted me right up, you know, made me feel just like home. Confidence is important for a young player, especially one so far from home. Daniel Cleary is from Newfoundland. He moved away last year to play Tier 2 Junior in Kingston. It's really tough, you know, I get really homesick, but, uh, but it's hard, you know, so you got to keep in touch with everyone back home and uh, try to keep your focus on hockey and school, you know. Larry Mavity has coached the Belleville Bulls for 14 years, and he's had some excellent players. But he's never coached a 15-year-old as good as Daniel Cleary. What's his strengths right now? Well, I'm moving the puck, we're passing the puck. Like he, the puck seems to follow him. He's one of those guys that uh, you'll be watching the game, and all of a sudden you'll look up and say, well, where did this eight come from? The puck does seem to follow Cleary around, the same as it does for his idol, Wayne Gretzky, and a few others. But it's really the ability to anticipate the play and know where the puck is going. Los Angeles Kings scout John Stanton can already see similarities with number 99. I'm not saying he's a Wayne Gretzky, but he's the best kid I've seen since him at the same age. But this guy looks like a first-rounder, early first-rounder right now. It does, I mean, all NHL, but I love to play there, but uh, I just take it day by day, you know, my first year in the league, just got my feet wet, you know, get used to everything around. Brian Smith, CJOH Sports. Well, Thursday night's big four-on-four -four charity game at Memorial Gardens has a couple of more big-name additions. Darren Turcott has announced that the Edmonton Oilers' Jason Arnott, last year's runner-up in the Rookie of the Year balloting, and, of course, a former Oshawa general, will be here on Thursday night. Chris Grant, one time at Kingston Frontenac, now a Tampa Bay Lightning star, is going to be here on Thursday night as well. Tomorrow night, it starts at 8 p.m., the four-on-four -four challenge for the National Hockey League Players Association with proceeds going to minor hockey and also another unnamed charity just a few seats remain so it looks like it could be a sellout tomorrow night and that will be exciting getting to boxing now following the illustrious footsteps of willie dewitt Ooh, there's a big name canadian heavyweight boxing champion tom the bomb glesby bombed out last night in his first major test the bomb was hammered by boston's joshua Imardi in their fight last night in erie pennsylvania 
broadcast on cable TV down in the States. Gillespie already down a couple of times here. Gets just hammered to the canvas. He was knocked down five times in about four minutes of boxing. And incredibly, the referee let him continue after this. He says he's okay. His eyes don't look too bad there. But he would get quickly hammered to the canvas a couple more times by Emerdini. And then finally, the fight would be stopped. There's a big right hand. There's another big right hand. And there goes Tom to the canvas again. And it was his first loss as a pro. It also cost him an appearance on the undercard of next month's world title fight between Canadian Scotty Olsen and one Jorge Ramon. So that could be the end of the line for Tom the Bomb Gillespie. Well, another guy who bombs it is Doug Flutie, except he throws passes and doesn't take it on the chin that often. Record-setting quarterback Flutie and slot back Alan Pitts are among 10 Calgary Stampeders named to the CFL's West Division All-Star team. Flutie, who has been nominated for his fourth straight MVP award, set a new CFL record this year with 48 touchdown passes. Flutie, Pitts, and linebacker Will Johnson, along with Edmonton's Willie Pless, were unanimous selections to the All-Star team. The BC Lions placed six players on the team, one more than both Edmonton and Saskatchewan, who had five. Sacramento had one player named, and the Las Vegas Posse, who aren't going to be in Las Vegas any longer, had no one named to the All-Star team. To the NFL now, New England Patriots quarterback Drew Bledsoe and Detroit Lions running back Barry Sanders have been named the NFL Offensive Players of the Week. Bledsoe, Bledsoe set an NFL record with 70 attempts and 45 completions, and the Patriots come from a vine victory last week over, I don't know who. Sanders rushed for 237 yards, the sixth highest total in NFL history, as the Lions beat Tampa Bay 14-9. Rod Woodson of Pittsburgh and Merton Hanks of San Francisco, a pair of defensive backs, led their teams to victories last week and are the AFC and NFC Defensive Players of the Week. To tennis now, and Martina Navratilova's brilliant singles career came to an end Tuesday night in New York City at Madison Square Garden. Gabriela Sabatini defeated Navratilova 6-4 and 6-2 in the first round of the season-ending Virginia Slims Championships. The 38-year-old American planned to retire from singles play after this tourney, ending a career in which she won 167 tournament titles. Wow. During her peak, Navratilova spent 332 weeks, almost seven years, ranked number one in the world. More from Armin Katayan. The ebb and flow of a majestic tennis life hit an emotional high last night as Martina Navratilova waved goodbye to the women's pro tennis tour at the age of 38. I will miss this game, but I'm ready for my new life. Thank you very much. Those words highlighted a moving tribute to the queen of center court at the Virginia Slims Championships in New York. And we've come to honor the greatest female tennis athlete of all time. Before the historic banner was raised, Navratilova battled hard against Gabriella Sabatini, losing the final singles match of an unparalleled 22-year career. I'm always trying to do my best, striving for uh, excellence. And uh, apparently that's rubbed off on a lot of people, so uh, I think that's, that's the best part that I take. In both tears and triumph, Navratilova redefined women's tennis with power and grace. Her signature attacking style produced a record 167 singles titles, including nine Wimbledon championships. But Tuesday night's tribute went far beyond tennis, honoring rare personal courage as well. She wore her heart on her sleeve, and she was never afraid to, to say, to speak out, and to say what she really felt. Navatilova says she doesn't know or care what she'll do next after her tennis career has ended. She talks about snowboarding in Colorado, or pursuing a career in broadcasting or acting. Whatever happens, one thing is certain. The influence of a majestic champion will be missed and not easily forgotten. Finally tonight, baseball owners are putting the finishing touches on a new labor proposal today before resuming talks with players tomorrow in Washington, D.C. The new offer reportedly centers on a payroll tax instead of a salary cap. So maybe baseball will be back on the field next year. Keep your fingers crossed. That is it for sports. The Bottom Line and The Good Doctor are coming at you next. I'm Dr. Dina Dell. Coming up, a disease sex may prevent. This car is 18 feet long, weighs over two tons, has dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, and a sophisticated impact management system. The new Neon also has dual airbags, available anti-lock brakes, and a sophisticated impact management system. Who says you can't have it all? 
say hello to Neon. At your Dodge and Plymouth dealers. Do you question your bladder control protection? The answer is new technology from Atens that you can sample for free. What makes it so new? Only new Atens has permadrive fibers woven in to absorb faster. Really? To see for yourself, call 1-800-567-1515 now for a free sample by mail. Do you have the right kind of protection for me? Ask for a pad, guard, undergarment, or brief. We'll help you choose the right size. Great! Call for a free sample today and look for Atens in the store. Great look. Beautiful hair. And only weeks ago, she came to my salon with a problem. Dandruff. So I showed her what Head & Shoulders can do. We washed half her hair with ordinary shampoo, the other half with Head & Shoulders. With regular use of ordinary shampoo, the flakes come back. But with regular use of Head & Shoulders, look, no more flakes. Looking good, Sally. Thanks to you. Head & Shoulders. Dandruff care for great-looking hair. Midland Walwyn introduces Compass, the new approach to sorting through the maze of mutual fund choices. Every mutual fund, whether it invests in stocks, bonds, or treasury bills, international or domestic, has its own set of objectives. The only way to understand if they suit you is to clearly understand your own needs. Compass matches the multitude of mutual funds to help achieve your goals. For a free consultation of your investment needs, please call me, Jim Bruce, at 472-2200. Good evening. Tonight in business, a new hydro generator is expected to save a northern forestry company more than $3 million a year. The new $17 million generator at EB Eddy replaces four old ones taken out of service. Rising energy costs forced it to look at other energy options. So it made sense to use the nearby Spanish River to generate power. When that generator comes online later this week, the company will produce 85% of its own power. And tonight, yet another warning on disposable lighters, this time on certain Cobra cigarette lighters, lot number 09-93. Health Canada says stop using Cobras as they have excessive flame and burn for 30 seconds after ignited. Well, Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe has long been a favorite with tourists, but now the major tourist attraction is becoming a mecca for tourists of a different kind for a different reason. Bungee jumpers from around the world are launching themselves from the Zambezi Bridge spanning that magnificent gorge. At 111 meters, it's the highest natural bungee jump in the world. The bungee enthusiasts describe it as the ultimate thrill, but at $100 a jump, the thrill is not cheap. On stock markets tonight, Dow Jones in New York up 18 points, TSE in Toronto edging up two. Gold down 25 cents, silver up 4 cents, nickel the spot price up 17 cents. Nickel continues to rise rapidly in the last few days. Copper up 5 cents, zinc up a cent. The dollar wraps up this day 73.20 cents U.S., no change in prime lending rates. Northern stocks, Inco down an eighth of a dollar, Falkenbridge up 3 eighths per share. Naranda down 1 eighth, Placer Dome edging up an eighth. Rio Elgum up 75 cents. Canadian Pacific up 25 cents a share, Northern Telecom up 3 eighths of a dollar, Bell Canada unchanged, Algoma Steel up 25 cents, as was Algoma Central. I'm Don Chapman, and that's the bottom line. Thanks, Don. It is something many women face upon becoming pregnant, the fear of developing what's called toxemia. It's a serious problem. But as Dr. Dina Dell reports, the solution to the problem could be very simple. Your baby is in your term size at 35 centimeters. One of the most important parts of prenatal care is checking a pregnant woman for a certain high blood pressure syndrome. You may have heard it called by other more ominous names, toxemia or preeclampsia. It can cause swelling, seizures, kidney complications, and premature delivery. Women can die from it. But what triggers it? As it appears to be a reaction between the mother and the placenta, and when you separate the mother from the placenta with delivery, the disease almost immediately it uh, gets better and the disease process resolves. It's almost as if toxemia is an immune response of the mother to her pregnancy, which may explain some new research by South Carolina doctors who think they may have come up with a very unusual way to prevent it. It has to do with sex. I know that's how you got into this situation in the first place, but researchers say extended exposure to a man's sperm seemed to reduce the risk of toxemia, as though it immunized the woman. 
Women having their first baby had an 11% chance of having hypertension. After their second baby, with more exposure to her husband's sperm, the figure dropped to just about 5%. But if she had a second baby by a different man, the risk went up to 24%, essentially doubling her risk. Couples who sexually cohabitated for 12 months before getting pregnant cut the risk of hypertension by half. But it's not likely your doctor will write you a prescription for lots of sex. So this is one you may have to do on your own. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. And we'll be back to wrap things up in a moment. Canada's favorite game show is coming up next. The Wheel of Fortune, right here on MCTV. This is the best tasting cheddar money can buy, Canada grade one. This could be second grade. So, how do you tell them apart? Well, you look for this. It's only on black diamond cheddar. Our cheese has to taste better. It's all we do. When it comes time to pay Santa, you'd be glad you shopped with the lowest prices are guaranteed. Consumers distributing. If you ever find a lower advertised price, we'll beat it by 5%. Lowest everyday prices and a 5% promise. We've got it. Mind if we show the Oldsmobile Achiever? We did. And agile and precise and responsive and... Absolutely. Everything from its 2.3-liter overhead cam engine, tenacious anti-lock braking system, driver's side airbag, and feature-laden interior, to its very affordable price, is thought out in meticulous detail. Hey, it's your money. you have in mind. We'd just like to remind you that Trimark Mutual Funds can help with a long-term investment plan starting today. There is a way to reach your financial goals. Trimark Mutual Funds. We manage to outperform. Some cheddar sold in Canada is second grade, and why not? It's perfectly legal, yet the only cheddar we sell is the best tasting cheddar, Canada Grade 1 cheddar. And why? Our cheese has to taste better. It's all we do. Welcome back. It was an important day for the Ministry of Transportation in North Bay. For the past few months, the MTO has been working on a major improvement project for Tebow Hill. Part of that project is an arrestor bed to be used for trucks which have lost their brakes. And the ministry had a chance to test the arrestor bed today. Truck loaded down with concrete blocks hit the arrestor bed at 70 kilometers an hour. And as you can see, the bed did its job. hardly looks at all like, like, like the way you come in. I thought it was the cameraman who'd be going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 he's using that, that zoom lens, I think. He was probably a little further back yeah, than that. no kidding. Weather-wise? Weather-wise, uh, put away your winter coats, take out your spring coat tomorrow with sunshine and 10 degrees, and it's going to stay for another day after that. Grand. Sports? Four on four night tomorrow. It might be the only chance to see NHLers this year. Oh, <laughs> so on that happy note, we will uh, see Greg and Kirk. They'll both be back at 11:30. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.